You've probably seen this before. It was most likely one of those things you saw all over Facebook for about a week and then never heard of again. This is the Ocean Cleanup's first autonomous system. It was launched back in September 2018 and we've not heard much from it since. But how is it even supposed to work? And after being at sea for three months, what went wrong? Firstly, let's tackle why this giant pool noodle is even needed. If you've seen a good amount of films, then you know we leave a lot of stuff in the ocean. Volleyballs with personalities, the Titanic, and Johnny Depp every three or four years. Basically, at this point, Hollywood has destroyed the ocean, like it has with some of its biggest stars. I guess I'll just use this picture again. However, what's happened on screen is nothing compared to what humans have done to it in the real world. We've spilt oil all over the place, crashed the real Titanic, and most importantly, dumped a lot of our waste in it. Some things are worse than others. Paper and food waste takes just months, if not weeks, to decompose. And for some reason we know that a battery takes 100 years, but the worst polluter of all is plastic. And it's this long-lasting, waterproof material that the ocean cleanup is attempting to, well, clean up. As a species, we dump 8 million tons of the stuff in our oceans every year. That weighs more than the Empire State Building, or 21 of them, and is actually more than every other species does combined. That's a rate so high that in 2050, it's predicted that we'll have more plastic floating around in our oceans than we will have fish, and it's a global problem. Despite the fact that 90% of all the waste that enters the sea does so through these 10 rivers, China's Yangtze River alone pushes out 1.5 million tons. Presumably it's quite easy to tell where it's come from. Although that might make these countries sound like the bad guys, it's worth noting that until recently, most of the Western world hasn't really been dealing with their plastic waste. Instead, they ship it to developing countries, abusing their power and influence for their own gain. Ah, just like the old days. The UK alone was shipping half a million tons of plastic waste to China every single year. If you like David Attenborough, and I mean, how can you not? You'll know that this plastic can obviously be dangerous for marine life. A lot of marine life is too small to ingest the larger pieces of plastic in the ocean, however there's another type of plastic that's much more dangerous. Microplastics are pieces that measure less than 5mm. This means they're easily ingestible by most marine life and can clog up their breathing or digestive systems and eventually kill them. There are an estimated 51 trillion pieces already in the ocean. Some of the microplastics are small enough that they get absorbed into the meat of the fish. This then means that humans end up ingesting it when they eat seafood. There's not a huge amount of research into the topic, so we can't be sure how bad it is for the human body. However, there are also chemicals used on the plastic that then leach out into the water and into the fish stocks, and some of those are linked to cancer rates, and we know that's pretty bad for the body. So what should we do about the plastic? Well, for me and you, the best we can do is reduce our plastic waste. This is a big subject. 40% of all plastic waste is from single-use packaging. But that's a whole other thing, so I'm not going to cover it in this video, Rather conveniently, Steph from Science with Steph is making a video all about how much plastic humans use and where it comes from. She's also actually got like real life qualification that says she's a smart person who knows things about stuff, so you should definitely go check out her video after this one. The issue with reducing our plastic now is that it's a little too late. There are already 150 million tons of the stuff in our oceans, and with a decomposition time of anywhere between 500 and 1000 years, we need to start doing something about it now if we don't want our future descendants to know how much we liked fidget spinners and yo-yos. <laughs> who am I kidding? Yo-yos are still going to be all the rage. Because of the currents of the ocean, plastic ends up amassing in these huge garbage patches, the biggest of which is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And obviously, the one next to the US would be the biggest and be called Great. It's been measured to cover 1.6 million square kilometres, which is three times the land area of France. One solution to the problem has been pitched by the creatively named The Ocean Cleanup. But they are from the Netherlands, so maybe it sounds cooler in Dutch. It was founded in 2013 by Boyan Slat, who joins the list of new technology leaders with cool names. He and his team managed to raise $2 million in crowdfunding, but also $21.7 million from the executive of Salesforce alone. With all of this money, they spent five years refining the plan and giving the tech journalists something to fangirl over. Eventually, back in late 2018, they launched System 1 to attempt to clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. They claim that this one system can reduce the garbage patch by half every five years, and eventually they want to get a network of 60 of them working around the world's oceans. To give a brief breakdown of how the system works, it's a 600 meter long tube that floats on the top of the ocean. This number's just a little down from the original plan to make it 100 kilometers long. There's also a short skirt underneath it that's meant to catch any plastics floating just below the surface. 
The theory was that the plastic in the ocean is moving as fast as the current, however the system would not only be pushed by the current, but also by wind and wave power. Therefore, it would catch up with the plastic and then a retrieval vessel would go in and scoop it up. However, the launch of its first system hasn't been a raging success. And when I say it hasn't been a raging success, I mean it hasn't really worked at all. Sure, the thing floats, it moves, and from what we can see, no marine life is being caught up in it. However, it proved to have a slight flaw where it suddenly splits apart and the parts float away from each other. In late December 2018, an 18-metre section of the system broke away due to mechanical stress from where the screen that hangs below the system was attached. The company were quick on their feet to get out there and retrieve it, so luckily it didn't become just another piece of ocean debris. They towed the entire system back to Hawaii and planned to have it back on duty by this summer. But the ocean cleanup has admitted that the mechanical failure really is the least of the issues. They discovered what caused this fairly quickly and say they can implement changes that will reduce the stress to the system. They plan to suspend the screen between two points on the system but not directly beneath it. However, what they haven't yet fixed is the fact that the system designed to capture plastic wasn't capturing any plastic. Actually, that's not technically true. The plastic was captured, but then it was just as quickly released. The company said the root cause of the issue is the system just not moving fast enough. So at times the plastic is moving faster and just outrunning the system's grasp. They've announced two possible measures to combat this. One, float some large buoys in front of the craft to act like sails and drag it along. Or two, attach what is essentially a giant parachute to work in a very similar way. However, these aren't even the only problems the project has faced. All through its development, it's faced serious scepticism from scientists, mostly about how worthwhile these systems are. Estimates say that only 5% of the plastic in the ocean ever ends up in one of these garbage patches, and most of it doesn't even float on the surface. Another study estimated that 92% of the plastic in the ocean is smaller than microplastics, and therefore isn't likely to be caught up in these systems. Critics have said that the massive amount of money being spent on the project could be put to better use reducing and recycling plastic waste. Maybe that's true, but predictably everyone wanted this to work because it would mean they wouldn't have to work as hard reducing their plastic use and could keep eating their crisps and might not have to pay any more for carrier bags. So it remains to be seen how effective the ocean cleanup project can really be. It's certainly not the start the company would have hoped for, but with them planning to relaunch the system in the next month or so, we'll have to wait and see how well it fares at sea this time. Let me know what you think about the project in the comments. Will it work or is it just a waste of money? Cheers for checking out my video. Remember to check out Science with Steph's video on her channel. Feel free to subscribe and like if you enjoyed the content and leave me any feedback or topic requests in the comments below.